Hi everybody, I'm Allison. Thank you for joining me for Where I'm From, number 144 with Hannah. Um, what are you reading? I'm reading Memorial Drive by Natasha Tressaway. I don't know, I haven't read this sooner, but I haven't. Um, it's beautiful so far and she's a poet and I, I particularly love memoirs by poets. Um, and today Hannah's joining me and she's written a memoir I talked about a while back called Strip, which I really enjoyed. Um, feels weird to say enjoyed because it's a lot about, um, addiction and, you know, different things that, hi Hannah, just talking about your book and how I loved it. Um, uh, I related to pieces in it, just like I relate to your poem today that you're going to read as soon as Instagram decides that you're allowed to join me. Oh, Instagram decided. Hi, Hannah. <laughs> it's on. Yeah, just so you know. <laughs> oh, it is? Yeah. I should have known that. I think you say that in your book. I'm sorry. What? No, how would you know? No, <laughs> thank you so much for having me on. Oh my goodness. Yes. That was such a uh, broadening, well, I'll let you talk. No, please talk. Oh, just the exercise of even writing the poem. At first I was so intimidated and I was like, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I can do this. And then my pride. And then I was like, just write it. Isn't it funny how people, including me, get intimidated with anything related to poetry? Yeah. It's like, oh, I'm not a poet. I can't possibly. But but we, we all can. Yeah. I mean, it, it's especially strange growing up with poetry and having a yeah. poet other that I would. Anyway. Yeah. I, I see people joining. Hi, everyone. I know. How lovely. Do I sound okay to you? I think I need to get my headphones. I sound weird to me. No, you okay. sound great. I have okay. headphones. Should I put them on? It's, it's up to you. I just do it because it cuts out background noise and I never know what's going to happen outside. Uh, I'll leave it without. Because then then you have to untangle them? <laughs> yeah, and I wouldn't be able to balance my phone then. <laughs> It is hard. To, I have a stand because you can't balance it when you plug the things in. It's very difficult. Yeah, yeah. and I have like a, a piece of pottery. It's you know against, and I'm on the floor. <laughs> like, do I do this? I know people have their. Pottery. I'm on the floor too. This is a bed behind me. This is my child's bed because I can close the door, and this is one of the only places I can close the door. So um, I, that's why I'm here. I love it. Yeah. Well, this is my. My yeah. on the floor. <laughs> I thought that was your bike behind you. That's very it's nice. Yeah. Um, Thank you. So I was just saying how much I enjoyed your memoir too, Strip. And that and then I felt weird saying enjoy because obviously it's about very challenging material, but I thought your writing was so beautiful and engaging and you know, you didn't I didn't feel like you were I think it's such a balance as a writer to explore what we experienced, but also not feel like it's dumping on the reader, you know? Yeah. And, and I did, I really felt that with your work. Like you had done so much of the work yourself that I wasn't in charge of doing the work as the reader. And I thank you. I thought it was beautiful. Well, thank you so much for that. That's a beautiful way of putting it. And I know what you mean about enjoy, because I'll say that <laughs> to some people, you know, about an essay. I'm like, you know, yeah. I'm like, Mm -hmm. I enjoyed that so much about reading, you know, mm -hmm. and it, it, that's the word though. I mean, yeah. it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm thrilled to hear that. Yeah. And you enjoy it. And also you, would, you know, I admire it and I want to recommend it to people. And I think sometimes people will say to me, I don't, I don't know how you read all this heavy stuff. And I mean, it, it's helped me survive and be the person I am today. So I don't really think of it as a chore. I mean, I truly do enjoy it. Yeah. I know Phil's yeah. counterintuitive, but it's true. Same, same. Yeah. yeah. I'm reading you know, that's pretty heavy right now. And, uh, and it's, yeah, speaks to yeah. me. Yeah. So, um, is there anything else you want to say before you read your poem? No, just again, thank you for the invitation to stretch yeah. my, my writing muscles mm -hmm. and uh yeah you're so welcome thank you for joining me i'm excited to hear your poem i so enjoyed uh you know reading the other people's on your 
page. Mm -hmm. um, so it's one page, just so you guys know. I always like to know how long I'm going to be listening to something. <laughs> Yeah, usually they're about that long. Sometimes I will get someone with more of a lengthy, you know, but yeah, that's about. I think shorter yeah. is better. I'm on <laughs> shorter. But this is actually a little long, but okay. The daughter of a poet, I am from misty mornings, Victorian houses, and sleepy time tea. My father's royal typewriter, click clack, click clack. I am from Canadian winters where lakes freeze over. Wood stoves burn and embers fly. Storm windows and wind howling, howling all night long. I am from Florida summers where cockroaches fly. Dairy Queen and Waffle House. Afternoon showers, saltwater taffy, palm trees and lizards. I am from fragments of color, yellow, pink, orange. Crayons and lollipops. Strange men in brown cars and bad boy babysitters, cherry blossoms, swings and strawberry kisses, a childhood torn open. I am from dolls that break, molasses nights, monkey trees and nightmares. It's me at six having a baby. I am from days of chanting, my father meditating, me in the closet with my meditation pillow. Om, Om, Om. I am from ashrams and gurus where people ask, tell me, guru, what is the meaning of life? I am from a voice muted, a silent cry. Fuck you, I want to yell to the guru. Fuck you and you. I am from summer days skipping down wisteria, hand in hand with my little sister. One, two, three, swing high, high, high. We glue our hands together, are ripped apart. I am from a family of goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. I am from places crowned yellow, red, pink, and brown, sometimes black. But always I come back, the poet's daughter, to nights on the dock where it's just me and my dad dancing, waiting for the sky to get all glittered up. That ending gets me every time. <laughs> like, but when I read it, I mean, you said it. It's so beautiful. Um, Thank you. Thank yeah. you, Allison. It was really, ended up being really fun to, to write. <laughs> fun sounds like, kind of like the word enjoy. It's really great. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it was. Yeah, and I, it was beautiful because I, I read your memoir. So there was a lot of the same things that are touched upon. And it was, it's a pleasure seeing it in a different, form or hearing it in a different form like and the way that you uh just the way you talked about different things like obviously in poetry we don't have to get as explicit if we don't want to but we can still feel the weight of the events yeah 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 it does include much of the book in there with the uh events and and even one of the images with the glittered up sky mm -hmm. uh if I remember correctly, I think that's in the book. I forget. It's been so long. I, it felt familiar to me. So, me too. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I did you talk about the guru in your book? Because that felt new to me, and it was I in the book. Did. Okay. I did. And uh, oh yes, that's right. And I think I also included that I wanted. You know, they were passing around a microphone in the ashram, and I was maybe five years old, and. I just want to grab that microphone and say, you know, fuck you. Mm -hmm. and, uh, <laughs> I felt similarly as a child in, uh, in places like that. I was, my mom was doing Life Spring, which is like um, the forum now or Est then. And there was a lot of um, sitting together and waiting for someone to tell you what a piece of shit you were um, in various ways. And um, I thought it was ter terrible. And then there was a lot of meditate, so much, so much meditating and doing yoga on a towel and whatever. I just, it was um, interesting. So I related to that uh, feeling of, uh, for me, it was the feeling of like, am I the only one who thinks this is terrible? Like the, uh, 
garbage that I am I the only one who's seeing this like, like, child in the room do you remember I mean lots of times yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah I think I, I think same I can't quite remember but yeah I mean there would be other kids from time to time but I was certainly um I was in a lot of grown-up spaces as a little person and I, I I don't know if you struggled with this but i didn't really understand that i was a child or like what the difference was between me and say like a 12 year old um yeah. or 17 year old like because we were in a lot of the same spaces um right right yeah i do and you know definitely being around mm -hmm. older people yeah so i just anyway that made me laugh like the desire to just to be be able to just say what you think of this and and also being five and say fuck you which is not every five-year-old <laughs> I, know, I know and I, I remember my stepmom uh shared that when i when meditation uh you know when it was that time i would hide in the closet and she said for some reason i had banana peels in there but you know and i remember my monkey pushkin pushkin banana peels in the closet you know <laughs> Mm -hmm. It actually took me a long time to even be open to meditation as an adult. Same. I you too? Yeah. Yeah, I was just uh, very, you know, that old story mm -hmm. was there. Yeah. And I never did TM for that reason. It was like, I'm going to do my own thing. I'm not going to do that thing. Um, Same. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Yeah. And it's ironic because then, you know, now I have a meditation practice. It's very... Mm -hmm very simple and not for very long but it's an important part of my morning and evening mm -hmm. and that when my father was still here we would do it together when i would whenever i would visit and i just <laughs> always laughed so i'm like who knew it would be my idea well, that's, that's that's funny. Dad. well and I, I have a friend who grew up in a ashram uh, spent a lot of her childhood in an ashram and and she and i talked about meditation from time to time because there's so much meditating you know it's like hours and hours of meditating and how that isn't good for everyone it's not good for most people and how there's really no conversations about that like you say it's short your practice my practice you know um and that yeah. it's really difficult for people with mental health issues meditating for hours and hours and hours um yeah yeah for me it, it i really had to well build, build my tolerance mm -hmm. to sit with myself which mm -hmm. is what my book is dedicated to mm -hmm. sitting hours uh yeah writing does that i feel the same way about my memoir in progress like it's helping me um unpack and understand and connect the dots and all those things. And it is like a meditative practice on some level. Yeah, yeah. It's, I remember when I was writing it, it just, uh, you know, it took, a, it took a long time because it was simultaneously happening with that internal work. Uh, and that was frustrating at times. At the same time, it couldn't have, I don't think I could have written it, well, I didn't any faster, right? I think you have to take care of yourself. I was actually speaking with somebody this weekend who has a book she wants to write, and I hope she does because it's an important thing. But I told her, like, just take care of yourself. Like, that's the most important. Like, the world needs your book, but also you need to take care of yourself. Yeah. Yeah, I was talking with a wonderful client. Wow, she's just writing an incredible book, and I'm so excited about it. Uh, but there is trauma in it and, and it's really, it's great to get to share my experience with what that was, what that looked like writing it. Mm -hmm. going yeah. to, uh, speaking to what you just said about taking care of myself. Yeah, because now also you've written the book and you're talking about what you wrote about. So like, not only do you have to take care of yourself in the process of writing the book, but if you want it to have a life after, you need to continue to touch on those spaces. Yes, and actually, thank you so much for that reminder. Tomorrow I'm going yeah. to D.C. to speak. Yeah. yeah, and I need that reminder of, you know, bringing God or, what you know, my higher power in and, and pausing before and uh, getting centered. Uh, fortunately, in the last year and a half since the book came out, I only had one experience where it 
I felt re-traumatized on a certain mm -hmm. point. That sounds kind of extreme, but it, but it was, it was very, it really touched something where it, it threw me. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm yeah. sorry. I mean, I think we endeavored to not have that happen, but sometimes it's out of our hands. Yeah. 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 And you know, nothing against men, but it was a man. <laughs> I'd like to pretend to be shocked, but I can't. So, um, yeah. And, you know, I don't think he, he wasn't aware of it, but it was, yeah. 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 Uh -huh. um, I, I th think also, yeah, I can go off on a tangent, but do you have any more, what, anything else you want to say about writing this poem or the prompt or the process or, um, Anything else? Mm -hmm. Well, when I thought I, I can't do this and I'll just tell Allison, no, <laughs> I thought about that. I was like, wait, what? No, I can't do this. Like, but you said you would. I'm like, but you're allowed to change your mind, you, you know? You are. You are allowed to change your mind. <laughs> but I just thought, well, that's fear. So uh, I, I'm a big advocate of free writing. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, I'm a pen to paper girl mm -hmm. or, or woman. Mm -hmm. and <laughs> in my you know 99 cent journals mm -hmm. and they're just they're something that's not intimidated about them and so i just mm -hmm. you know just write without picking up the pen and that really helps uh break it for me and then reading what i have and going from there so it's not so it's not so precious and, and that speaks to me with writing beyond poems or, or anything. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'll be trying to be so precious with it. And that really, that can block me. And I say this often, but, and I don't, yeah, just the permission to write, you know, Natalie Goldberg says it, the shittiest shit. Mm -hmm. uh, and that stayed with me for the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, yeah. And, and you know, most of the time it feels, you know, it doesn't, uh, I'm like, well, this is nothing, mm -hmm. but it, it's, get it on, get it on the paper it's so, so important somebody just asked me oh lisa cooper allison my my best like writing advice that i'd ever received and my head too like from my early writing it was fuck quality which is like writing the shittiest shit and i like that <laughs> quality that's has a shittiest shit that's i like i like that i might say that i start I mean, because and he was like, just put it on a little post it on your monitor and yes. just like look at it and just remind yourself like fuck quality because I think so oftentimes yeah. we get ahead of ourselves like, oh, well, this isn't what I would share, blah, blah, blah. you know, like obviously their first draft not about that. That's yeah. not where we're at when we're sitting down. Just write the thing. About quality, yeah, I, I love that. I was in my writing group yesterday, and I, you know, had a story to bring. So I'm working on a collection, and I stopped about three pages in and said, "I'm so bored by this." Like I, I was bored by the first page of it. I'm like, okay, and you know, that was not their feeling. Uh, <laughs> it just didn't feel uh, the pacing. I, I was just bored by my own self. But, uh, but that's also the thing with quality, right? That's why it's so important to share it aloud. I don't, often don't know what I have. Yeah. Uh, you know, most of the pieces I've submitted, I'm like, well, this is just a, you know, uh, a free write, like mm -hmm. you know, my most recent one with the LA Times. It was, a, it was just a, just, it was just a free write. <laughs> Why well, it was very it was it was good um and I think for me I read out loud to myself a lot to you because of that very thing of like it's a different experience reading it in your head because you skip over you know like oh I've read that like unconsciously but when you yeah. read it out loud you have to actually read every word I think that's really important and I I would like to do that more uh, and it's always my intention to it it does sound different. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. and it's your voice. I mean, for me, it's like so important, the voice of it. And I, I thought in your memoir, you had such a powerful voice. And I find myself drawn to memoirs and writing in general that feels like I know the person. I mean, obviously, you always feel like that because of the content, but it's different when the voice is very um, clear.
I remember when I would be reading it with my mentor and writing group in different settings and I, uh, my voice and mannerisms became very childlike. I wasn't aware of that, but yeah. people would say you're swinging yeah. your legs like a kid. And, and uh, I, I even wore little braids mm -hmm. and it just wasn't very conscious of that. Like, oh. I really loved all that stuff at the beginning. I thought you captured that time in our lives, especially feeling like a child and an adult at the same time. Right. I, I love the process of writing. I mean, not always while I'm in it, but what what evolves it and how the story, you know, unfolds. Because, you know, I say this often, but even though it was, it's a linear, told linear, it wasn't right that uh, mm -hmm. it wasn't written that way, <laughs> and I never intended to write about childhood. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, that was I was like no just write about sex work and stripping and drugs. I don't want it. That's easier. That's what people want to read. Yeah. <laughs> I, about, you know, I think but, that a lot of people feel that way. And that's part of the reason I, I like, you know, they say you create what you need. And I think I very much created this space because I am very interested in childhood because I think it's formative, whether we want to think it is or not. And I, I spent so much of my grown up life feeling like I should be over it, my childhood. And especially the youngest parts, it's like, well, that was like a very long time ago. And, you know, children are so resilient, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And yeah, I wasn't over it. I'm not going to be over it. That's who I am. Right. Yeah, I definitely did that for, for a long time. And then, and then I would tell myself, well, pe other people had it way worse. Oh, for sure. and you know Always. all of that and, and it just took me a long time to realize and come to it within myself that that was a way of for me anyway pushing it away mm -hmm. not doing the work because it would just be like and i really did you know i mean yes people definitely have it worse yes listening to a woman share her story yesterday and oh my god <laughs> just like yeah. unbelievable uh what childhood what childhood uh yeah what, what people can experience or do experience. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. What's your, uh, what's your, I don't know about advice on writing, but what's, what's going on for you right now? <laughs> advice. Um, what is going on for me is I'm working on this memoir and then I'm taking step back from it because I've done a few drafts and now I need to just take a break, uh, which always feels like such a huge relief. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. Like it feels like a literal vacation, even if I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. It's just like, oh, I don't have to think about it. I don't have to engage with it. You know, it's just over there. Um, and so it's summer. So I'm going to try to spend time with my family and um, do that. because it's important to have balance. And, uh, and I'm also working on the sibling loss anthology that I'm co-editing with Lynn Shattuck. So we're, we're editing all of that and, trying to find a home for it. And, um, that is a, something I'm speaking of things from childhood that I sort of put away, you know, my yeah. brother died when I was 10 and I'm, he's my, he was my half sibling as all my siblings are, but I never, that was not a word I cared about or identified with in any way. But when he died, I was told it a lot as a way of erasing any grief I might've had. Um, and I just took that, in and accepted it um oh. and so it's been so powerful well your sister is your half sister right yeah, yeah and i have many more i didn't include them in the book because mm. it got crazy you know my father's been married five times so there's a, there's a lot of us uh and I'm, i am just my heart goes out to you with your brother uh, I, what was his name my michael Michael, Michael, one of my brothers is named Michael. And, you know, it's interesting. I remember in eighth grade, my first mad love crush, he had a twin. And, and uh, I remember their father was an anthropologist and they went to Africa for this one summer. And his twin, who was also in my grade and in my class, yeah. uh, was in a car accident with the father and the other twin and died. Mm -hmm. And all these years later, I dream about those twins so often. Mm -hmm. it, it's really 
quite unbelievable. It's uh, it, something about that sibling loss. I, I, it's unfathomable to mm. me. Mm. Uh, I always tell my sister, you know, just don't die before me. It's selfish, but yeah. please don't. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, yeah. Which, and I think uh, twin, there is a community twinless twins because it is such a like profound loss. Um, and Sibling. yeah, but sibling loss in general is just the, it's kind of the forgotten mourners. Like you, you're the people that everyone kind of just um, doesn't pay attention to. So working on this anthology and reading all of this work and it's been very powerful and connecting with all of these siblings. Um, yeah. It's, it's an important anthology. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I have no doubt that we'll find a home when yeah. it's ready. You know how it is finding a home. So it's just it's the process. It's inside, outside, mm -hmm. <laughs> in every sense of the word. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but it's, it's, um, I'm grateful that I'm in partnership with Lynn and that I'm not, it's, it's so, it's such a gift to be doing something with someone else, you know, like collaboration oh and all of it. It, I mean, it really makes a difference when it you're not alone. It does. I love collaborating. It's such a special relationship when you can, when you do find that just like a, a writing, mm -hmm. group, right? Dynamics or it's, it's gold. It I've is. always wanted to collect. Well, I kind of do in some sense, uh, but yeah. Yeah. And it's funny that you would mention Lisa. Le What's her name? Lisa Cooper Allison, who, yeah. whose brother died when she was in her twenties. And that's how we've actually connected. She's a part of the anthology and um, she's friends of ours. Okay, yeah, I was just having uh, uh, dinner the other night with a writer from Instagram who, who she might even be here on Instagram Live if you are, hi. <laughs> uh, she was in LA, so we decided to meet for, for dinner and she, that was her, uh, yeah, writing coach. Yeah, she's wonderful. Yeah, she's wonderful because she's trauma informed because she's a therapist. And uh, so I think it's, it's so important important I think we've probably all been in writing spaces where we've shared things and it wasn't safe and yeah right and so it is so important to have a space that feels safe and and not re-traumatizing to take it back to your comment like I mean I've certainly been in spaces that were not safe and yeah it's, yeah it's I'm awful. very grateful to have that mm -hmm. strength experience uh, with writing my own memoir of creating that safety for my for mm -hmm. myself uh, as a whole routine of yeah. you know, of being in my body during it when I was so used to so many years of disassociating. Mm -hmm. so what does that look like? I'm like, wow, this is a lot of work for a paragraph. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a lot of work to go to the grocery store. Like to not dissociate, it. it's like, it's a lot of work if you've been doing it for a long time. Yes, yeah, yeah, especially the grocery store. Yeah, there's a lot going on there. A lot, <laughs> lot and yeah, yes, yeah. A lot of soup, everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so um, any other last thoughts? And did you wanna just touch on your advocacy? Cause I'm really um, moved and I think what you're, your advocacy is so important and is something that doesn't get talked about enough. So if you wanted to talk about it for a few minutes. I yeah, yeah, I I'm not asked about that too often. And it's interesting because I don't think of myself as like an advocate. But you are. How, what's that? You are. You absolutely are. Well, thank you. Yeah, as you know, uh, tomorrow I go to D.C. Uh, to be part of World Without Exploitation. It's an organization about, you know, sex trafficking, human trafficking, incredible organization uh, and I'm going in conjunction with Voices and Faces Project which is an organization based in Chicago that I had the privilege of flying to to do an event or a panel with them for C-SPAN and talking about um, this woman Anne K. Ream, Ream wrote a book and that she traveled all over the world mm -hmm. gathering stories about women who had been assaulted mm -hmm. uh, and from that became Voices of Faces project about how important it is to tell our stories. Mm -hmm. uh, whether an advocate or not, you know, when we tell our stories, it, it's 
it, it makes a difference. And, and in that sense, I do think we're all advocates now that I said I wasn't or didn't or identify necessarily as that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, going to DC to do this and, and talk uh, on, uh, you know, on a, on a panel with uh, a few other women that, I mean, I'm humbled to, to be with them and, and talk about the personal experience, but how that informs and how that spreads, right? Because sometimes I think of advocacy as like being on the street mm -hmm. and maybe my, you mm -hmm. know, all of that, but it's telling our own stories. It's so important and it's incredible working with women to help them to, you know, support mm -hmm. them to tell their stories and what that looks like, whether it's shared or not, right? Mm -hmm. That's what I always yeah. remind myself that I, I feel somewhat fortunate with my book that I, you know, didn't start out thinking I want to write a book. Mm -hmm. I want to, I was newly sober and I want to write again. That was the dream, mm -hmm. right? So it was, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Does anyone have any questions or do you, Allison? <laughs> Um, I see two, Jillian's here. Yes, you there are people here for sure. And I don't know if I have questions, but you can put them in the chat if you do. I, um, I just think I had a conversation recently with a friend. We were talking about sex work because, you know, I just want to support sex workers in whatever way that is. And I had been under the impression that, like, legalizing it was the way to do it. And she was like, no. <laughs> because, Same. because. Because that is just going to make it easier for the people who are exploiting sex workers. And I didn't even realize that. And I was so grateful that we started talking about it because, you know, I thought I was informed and I was wrong. <laughs> Same. Yeah. Same. I'm going to this, you know, uh, conference tomorrow and I'm only just becoming more informed. And yeah. And same, I thought legal legalize it, but I didn't realize the ramifications of mm -hmm. that. And very scary, very right. Scary, you yeah. know, and especially just, now because there are so many women that uh, I, I've heard. I've heard many people talk about like the empowerment with it and the choice, mm -hmm. and yes, all of that. So I, I was definitely uh, same mm -hmm. same as you mm -hmm. and. It's an ongoing process. The more I read about it, it's um, scary, very scary, especially for uh, sex, sex trafficking of minors. Well, I'll, hey, do I'll you see that. Sarah's comment? This is very sweet. Very much enjoying this deeply relatable conversation about love. <laughs> the conversation, love what you mentioned about writing a memoir means being an advocate. And um, Sarah is also a sibling loss survivor. And um, her sister died from Tay-Sachs. So she is actually, she is truly an advocate. We all are, Sarah, but she's out there trying to raise awareness about Tay-Sachs. Sarah, thank you. Thank you for, for writing that in there for your own journey and, and you know, my heart to you with your, with your loss, this profound, yeah. uh, there really are no words. Uh, it's, and I did want to say before we wrap, I thought your relationship with your sister in the book was so beautiful. And um, it really did speak to that bond that we have with our siblings, that they're with us for our lifetimes. And that we, in, in the best case, we're evolving and growing together and supporting each other. And um, I'm glad you two have each other. Me too. Me too. It was uh, a lot of, yeah, I'm very, very I'm very fortunate. Yeah, I'm just, oh, okay, I'm just reading what I wrote, yeah. Mm -hmm. So again, Allison, thank you for having me on, and thank, thank you, you for, for joining me. the attendees on this uh, mm -hmm. day. Uh, and good luck at your conference, and I just, I'm grateful for your work, and that you're out in the world with your writing and your advocacy, like, you're doing a lot of really important things, so thank you. Thank you. I didn't even, I didn't talk about the incarcerated writers, but that'll be another time. <laughs> Yeah, that too, I, which is so important. Amazing things we can be involved in, uh, but telling our stories is yeah, empowering. Yeah. Hi, Lauren. Thank you for being here. <laughs> she's the she's the author that I'm I'm talking that I'm you know uh, coaching just started coaching with. It was an incredible story. Incredible. Uh, 
so excited for this book well, to come forward. Lauren, if you ever want to join me for a poem, reach out. She will, because I'll, I'll tell her to. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I would say the same thing to Sarah, but she's already joined me. So she knows. She already has. Yeah. Um, yeah, just one last. Yeah, Christine is in D.C. and she's an incredible author. She wrote, she does advocacy with, uh, well, anyway, now I'm getting into a whole other well, thing. I'm so excited. D really hit Hannah. Sorry, I just did it again. Um, please do tell anybody to reach out because I love hearing from people and I want people to join me. And this is, you know, a safe, inclusive space. Lauren and Christina. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. And okay. <laughs> Sounds good. I hope everything is goes well at your conference. And it was such a pleasure. And we're going to meet one day in real life because we're both in LA. So we have to prioritize that. Yeah. Yes. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. For, Bye. For your memoir launch. <laughs> Sorry. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>